Hey, what's up? Justin here and welcome to 65 Drums. Today I'm reviewing the Yamaha DTX 452K. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an unboxing, playing through all the 10 kits inside, and then go through all the individual features at the end of the video and compare it to other models available from other companies on the market. So, see you in a sec. All right, so now that all that's out of the way, let's talk about specs, how large the drum set is overall, and is it actually fun to play compared to other options around the same price point on the market? Okay, so let's start with sizes first. 
All the symbols are pretty much the exact same thing. They're 10 inches across, they're all single zone, nothing really to write home about. Thankfully, they changed the design because the previous version, the 400 series, as opposed to the 402 series that this is now, it had this giant wedge just left missing on the top of the symbol. Thankfully, they did the redesign. It looks way nicer. The symbols are fine. They don't feel quite as flimsy as other, you know, pads that look similar on the market, but they are bare bones, entry level symbols. Now, moving over to the Tom pads, they're seven and a half inches across. Now the catch is the rim isn't really playable, so sometimes you'll accidentally hit the rim and nothing will happen. Moving over to the snare, the snare is about eight inches even across. Now in this version of the drum set, we'll talk about the three versions in a second, this version of the drum set has a special three zone snare. So you have rim click on one of the zones, you have rim shot on another one of the zones, and then you have the rim head on you know, the middle zone. Now a lot of times from companies like Alesis or Roland, what they'll do is they'll have a dedicated button you'll have to press on the module to switch between rim click and rim shot. Or those companies will try to guess depending on how hard you're hitting the rim. If it's like a softer hit, sometimes they'll set, they'll you know put out a sound of a rim click. And if you hit really hard on the rim, they'll try to make it into a rim shot sound. Yamaha just has three dedicated zones for that. Now moving over to the kick drum pad, it's five inches across. And before you ask me, yes, I did test it with a double kick drum pedal, my Iron Cobra, using DW beaters. And I found that the triggering wasn't that great. It technically fits on the pad, but you need your beater to be really centered on this pad or else you'll get one beater that's louder than the other one. So yeah, I would stick to single kick drum you know, beaters with this. Also on the metal kit inside of the module, they do convert your hi-hat pedal into a kick drum sound. Okay, so jumping ahead to the drum module, this is the DTX-402. A couple of things to note about this is that it's not using a cable snake like all the other drum modules at this price range. That's good because if one cable goes bad on this, you can replace one cable and not a $50 cable snake. So that's very good. I like it when modules do that. Now the interesting thing though, is that the module inputs are eighth inch and the pad inputs are quarter inch. So I just thought that was funny. Now on the front of the drum module, it's interesting, they put the power supply input there, they put the aux input there and the headphone jack input there. Those are all good choices. I wish the aux input was always on the front of the drum module. That way it's easier to plug in your cell phone. Now, the bad part about this module is just like the Roland TD-1 drum module, it only has one output for your headphones or to go to a speaker or to record something. So when I wanted to record and listen to what I was playing for this video, I actually had to run it to a mixer and then plug my headphones and uh, you know cords going to my Focusrite interface from that mixer. You wouldn't have to do all that if it just had one extra master out port. Now, as far as I can tell, there's two main reasons why they didn't put a screen on this drum module. The first reason is that it's just cheaper. And the second reason is because they put a lot of time and effort into making a pretty decent app for this drum set. Just like the previous version, the DTX 400 line, they've made an app that lets you select through all the different kits and then edit through all the different trigger settings and then build your own custom kits. And they also have a training section of the app where you can scroll around and they'll do different training functions. They'll have videos and challenges and stuff. So the app that they've got for this is pretty darn robust. If you are going with the drum set, the app is one nice feature that it has. Most of the other electronic drum companies, they don't even bother to make an app for their drum set. I can only think of a handful of them that actually do. And if you want a dedicated video on all the different apps for electronic drum sets, I've actually got a video on that. I'll try to post the link up here on the screen right there. Now there's a couple of things that I really don't like about this drum set. The first is that they're going with all rubber pads. They could have easily put in DTX silicone pads, at least for the snare on their most expensive version. We're gonna talk about the three versions in a second. Now the good news is it's a four post drum rack. I always like the drum racks to be four post. But the problem is there's hardly any room to adjust anything. Also, I've noticed that there's only one rotation stopper for all of the cymbals. So I used it for the hi-hats. They have little rotation stopper holes on top of the cymbals. They should have put that on the ride in the crash as well. I don't know why they didn't do that. So I keep talking about how there's three versions of this drum set, but I haven't really talked about the different models and the pricing of everything. So let's do that really quickly. The cheapest one is the Yamaha DTX 402K. $500, you don't get the kick drum tower and uh, you don't get the nicer hi-hat controller pedal. And it's got a single zone snare. I don't really recommend this version of the drum set unless you need to be incredibly quiet and a kick drum tower is too loud for your, your apartment with thin walls or whatever. The next step up is the Yamaha DTX 432K. 
Now the upgrades here is that it has the kick drum tower and it comes with a kick drum pedal, obviously, and it has the better hi-hat controller pedal. So you're getting those two things for the extra $100. It's still got the single zone snare. It's basically a tom pad that they're using as a snare pad right there. And then finally, the version that I have behind me right here is the Yamaha DTX 452K, $700. And that $100 upgrade, all it's getting you is a three zone snare. So to be honest, if all the prices are regular and there's no rebate going on, there's no Black Friday sale, if you had to buy them at regular prices, I can't recommend the DTX 452K or the DTX 402K. I'd only recommend the DTX 432K. And here's the problem about all three of these drum sets. They're all overpriced by about like 150 bucks. You know, the electronic drum market has moved beyond seven inch rubber pads. So let's talk about the main competition from the other companies on the market. What can you get from five to $700 in the electronic drum world? First of all, I'm gonna just say, stay away if you can from Cap Percussion, D-Drum, and Simmons. In general, they're just not as good as Alesis, as Roland, and as Yamaha. So we're gonna talk about those three companies for now. First of all, you have the Alesis Surge electronic set for $500. I got a chance to play it. You get all mesh pads for $500, a 10 inch snare. The drum module is kind of subpar. It sounds pretty awful, but at least you do have, you know, two outputs. You have MIDI in and out. You have an extra slot or two to add more pads. The quality of the cymbals isn't on par with the Yamaha ones but this drum set is pretty darn killer for $500. The second Alesis drum set is the Alesis Command Mesh. This drum set is pretty much identical to the other one I was talking about. The only main difference that you'll see is that there's a different drum module. Moving ahead to Roland, they're just like Yamaha. They have three different versions, five, six, and $700. The first one is the Roland TD-1K. It's been around for ages. It definitely works, but I'm missing that kick drum tower. And so I would only buy this if you're on an extreme budget or if you can find it on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, where someone has already put a kick drum tower in there because you can upgrade the pads here. Moving ahead to the Roland TD-1KV, this one has a mesh snare instead of a rubber tom pad pretending to be a snare. I would still say I wouldn't buy this one unless it had the kick drum tower. That's just me, you might be different you might be in a low volume situation, but I would still shy away from these two versions of the Roland TD-1 if possible. And then moving ahead to the last one, this is the Roland TD-1 DMK. Of the three versions of the Roland kits, I would buy this one because you have a kick drum pad that's really darn important to me personally. And then of course you get the premium components. You get the mesh snare, mesh toms. The module of course is the really, really weak point here. They should have just had a TD-4, maybe even a TD-11 since the TD-11 is gone now. But to break it down really simply, if you're gonna buy Yamaha, I would buy the DTX-4 32K for $600. And then of course you have the Roland TD-1 DMK for $700. And then there's the Elisa Surge electronic drum set. So I've thrown a lot of information at you in this video. Here's a really quick breakdown of the pros and cons of the Yamaha drum sets. First of all, they've got really nice apps. You can control everything. You can build custom kits. There's a lot of training features. You can do all kinds of stuff way easier inside of the app. And I think that's a really nice thing in its favor, especially because Roland and Alesis and the other companies, they usually just don't have anything that can compare to the Yamaha app ecosystem. Second, um, I do like the fact that the sounds are at least decent for the price range. Not awesome, not, not really anything to write home about, but when compared to something like the Alesis Forge drum module, the Alesis Surge drum module, uh, they're actually above average. Next, I do like the fact that, this, that the snare is actually three zone. You have a rim zone, you have the rim shot zone, you have the drum head zone. That is actually pretty darn nice. On the negative side, you're just getting rubber pads. You're not getting one mesh pad or all mesh pads or one DTX silicone pad. You're just getting stock bare bones rubber pads. And a lot of the pads don't even have a rim zone on them. Um, another thing is that the drum rack isn't really easy to customize. Everything just has to be the way it is and in the photo, you don't really have much wiggle room there. Um, and also I wish that there was multiple outputs on the drum module so you could record yourself a little bit easier and not have to use a sound mixer. If you've played this drum set in a store, if you own one, let me know your own little mini review down in the comments below. I'm really interested to read your thoughts. By the way, Yamaha did send this to me for 30 days. They're not paying me at all. They did send me the review unit though. I gotta figure out how to put it back in the box that they sent me because everything is just like surgically in the right place. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and especially thank you to the people on Patreon who helped make these videos possible. You're the real MVPs. See y'all in a few.